Hey, I'm Cody. Thanks for joining me in my living room. This is actually my living room. I wanted to share a few things that I'm very passionate about um, that have to do with helping organizations train their people better and also have to do with one of my favorite topics that I love to talk about. I love to talk about story. So I wanted to share something that of a new stories that I'm reading and get your thoughts on that. If you wouldn't mind following me at CA Storyscape um, or hashtag CA Storyscape if you're on LinkedIn. And I would love to hear your thoughts about what's coming. When we're talking about stories, stories are usually thought of as all oh, they're nice little things that we entertain ourselves with or that we teach to our children so that they learn the stories that are necessary for life. Well, they are necessary for life. You've got that one right. But they're not just for children. And there is a reason why millions and millions of people will pay millions and millions of dollars to go see Marvel superhero films. It's not just because they're entertaining. Trust me. Like, that is not the only reason for why people are spending millions and millions of dollars. In fact, there are many social scientists who are studying the use of comic book heroes to deliver very influential thought processes, ideas about life, and challenging our understanding of our world using that medium. And what's cool is that we don't have to only use that for Hollywood people. That story can be equally as important for us as leaders in our organizations to help us think and frame our worlds and the way our cultures work so that it makes sense for us to live in it, just like living in any story that we listen to. And what's cool is uh, right now I'm actually reading first, I'm reading a nonfiction story uh, that took place uh, back in the 1800s. And of course, it would be about Lincoln, my favorite president. Team of Rivals, fantastic book, highly recommended. Uh, I highly recommend it. I've already cracked a little bit of it. I've got the audio book I'm listening to as well. Uh, Doris uh, Kearns Goodwin is the author. And this book is discussing how Abraham Lincoln took his team of people who he actually were rivals politically with and helped try to unify not only his team, but also the nation that his team was simply a microcosm for. And he deliberately developed his cabinet so that he had a microcosm of views of the entire nation so that he could figure out ways to improve the processes of both the government that they, he was uh, tasked with leading and also to bring unity between these differences of opinion and thought. And he did uh, a very amazing job in this process that I became fascinated by him uh, when I was a kid and still am today of learning as much as I can about Abraham Lincoln. Well, you can see that this uh, cover here is actually for the film uh, Lincoln as well that they used to reprint this book. And the film Lincoln is done by Steven Spielberg, big Hollywood director. And what he saw in this film was an incredibly great opportunity to discuss something very powerful, near and dear to his heart, and one of the things that he felt were very impor important for our culture to discuss as well. And of course, his uh, book, uh, or his uh, film, Lincoln, was one of the greatest films ever written, in my opinion, and also in the opinion of some great screenwriters, uh, as such as Aaron Sorkin, who wrote The West Wing. He also believes that perhaps Lincoln's uh, the screenplay here uh, is probably one of the best screenplays ever written. These stories are so much more impactful than just entertainment. And we know that because we can study this figure of Lincoln in a book like this and come away with great leadership principles to, ap to apply to our leadership. If we know that, and we know that we can watch a story that condenses those values and still walk away with leadership principles, in fact, sometimes even more readily available to, to grab onto those leadership principles when you see that on film, portrayed and walked in real life. Why don't we think about that in other areas of story? Like I said, comic books have a unique draw, and there's a reason. It all goes back 
to the fact that oftentimes we use cultural narratives in order to communicate our culture's values. And those narratives drove how the culture thought of their world, responded to events, responded to obstacles, pursued, pursu uh, pursued corrections to those obstacles, overcoming those things, and also kept people on the right path and helped steer people away from the wrong path. Stories help frame our world in human development for thousands of years, and it was incredibly effective as a way of helping determine culture. Now, we understand some ideas of this because we do tell stories for our brand advertising. You might have heard of brand storytelling and how that can really drive your business outcomes, particularly in marketing. And that is a big movement right now is brand storytelling, which is one form of storytelling that is one way to impact your organization. But it's kind of an outside in if you start with thinking about only using story to communicate out and bring people in if it's just that level of understanding. Because story is so much more deeper and more intimate of a process than just marketing. It impacts your very soul. That's why stories are effective. It touches something deep in humanity. And so, as a consequence, there have been many historians, psychologists, therapists who have used story in order to influence human behavior. Joseph Campbell was one of those uh, pioneering figures uh, that began to really explore uh, in modern day how to explore connecting stories with how human beings function. Of course, Carl Jung before him was a big uh, predecessor to a lot of his work. Um, but also figures like Jordan Peterson, uh, organizational, uh, he's a psychologist, uh, clinical psychologist that impacts a lot of people today. Um, he uses story in his work and talks about the importance of mytho mythological structure and archetypal structure that they can actually help you understand how to influence human behavior and how to retain value systems influencing how people actually live their daily lives in your organization. And so, what if we didn't just use these cultural myths, these just these uh, nonfiction stories, because a cultural myth sometimes were actually true stories or things that were based in truth. Sometimes they were completely fiction and made up for the specific purpose of influ influencing culture. And it worked. So why can't we use other forms of fictional mythological structures? Like, my favorite, The Dark Knight. What if we used things like this? Now you can say, wow, we're in the comic book range again. I don't think that's, that's just, we're, we're outside of my, my purview now. Are you sure? Think about that. This isn't much different than what a cultural narrative was for the ancient people of our time that influenced how they behaved and how they acted. In fact, these are extremely important uh, that influence our culture in how, they, how we think about the world. Many people use memes to communicate how they feel about many circumstances and oftentimes drawing it from the realm of film. And so you can see that, that the ideas of how to live do connect to fictional worlds. And sometimes fictional worlds can represent something that even nonfiction worlds cannot because they can be crafted in a way that communicates the imagination that is far more important to be able to craft your understanding of the world than just a nonfictional reference. Because just the imagination communicates parts of your being that is beyond simple fact. It's something, that, something that's true about yourself that you can't even articulate. Imagination can bring us to an understanding of ourselves and how to communicate with our world that sometimes transcends what we understand the real world to be. These stories are just equally as important as a cultural narrative 
or as a fictional narrative to help influence thought, behavior, ideas, and help recognize when there's a problem with all of those realms. What if you think of, have you ever thought about using stories as the leading edge of how you connect with your cultures in your organization? How would you improve or change that feeling of training if you thought about it as training like Batman and uh, Bruce Wayne into Batman? Because there was a time where he was not Batman. The origin story of Bruce Wayne becoming Batman took a lot of training, a lot of commitment, and it also took the kind of person who is willing to do all of that. And so how do you find those people? How do you develop them in a way that turns them into heroes and not villains? And how do you keep them on the path of continuing to pursue what it means to be a hero and away from what it means to start to develop to be a villain because every hero can become the villain and that's what's explored in the dark knight uh, that story is specifically designed to talk about what point do you become a villain can you stay a hero even when you have to go very far in order to stop the the the, the current villains where's that dividing line well where is that dividing line in our own lives we can absolutely play villains to people in our lives and we can play heroes to them. As leaders in organizations, you're already playing that story. Your people have already framed you as either a hero or a villain. So the question is, how do you influence what they think about are you a hero or are you a villain? In fact, are their definitions for what a hero and villain are consistent with what your definitions and your company's definitions are for what makes a hero in your company and what makes a villain, someone that takes you away from the values and direction and purpose that you're intending? And boy, does that happen. So what can you do with the power of story if you were to frame your training that way? Well, if you follow a lot of my uh, different things that I've got on social media and things that I'm putting out there, you'll see some ideas. If you want to learn more about these ideas and how to influence your cultures with the power of story so that we all live as wise heroes for those we lead, you can always connect with me. You can reach out to me at let's connect at castoryscape.com. Got my email in the link below. And I'd love to connect with you to be able to talk to you about how can we improve the way in which we communicate our values using the powerful medium of story? Thanks for joining me and my living room. I hope you guys have a great night.